Facing demolition, the A. Conger Goodyear House in Westbury, Long Island was included on the World Monuments Watch in 2002. The house was designed by Edward Durrell Stone for A. Conger Goodyear, the first president of the Museum of Modern Art, at the same time that Stone was designing the museum's original building on West 53rd Street. The house was completed in 1938, but after Goodyear's death, it fell into disrepair and by the time it was listed on the watch, a permit to tear it down had been issued and a bulldozer was on the site. It was in the newspaper when I heard about it. They were seriously thinking of taking it down. We made some inquiries and, uh, and, and it turned out that we could help. It becomes an issue for the society as a whole. It's a kind of, you have to have a commitment to your past and to yourself and to your culture. You're interested in art one way or the other and you're uh, you know, you, you come to New York in the 50s. Museum of Modern Art was kind of an educational institute. It was like going to school. And uh, it, all artists went there. I mean, I remember in the 60s seeing Mark Rothko walking through there. I mean, uh, you know, and, uh, but uh, everybody talked about what the modern did. It had the history that was the background for what any artist hoped to do in New York. Modernism or contemporary art from the Museum of Modern Art moved eastward through Long Island. So that was the focus of, uh, and the drift of uh, the ideas. It seemed kind of obvious that a house had to be saved uh, for just about as many reasons as you could think of. Part of the legacy of, the, of modern architecture in our time. Uh, and it's just beautiful simply both straightforward and dramatic. When you approach it, uh, there's a, a kind of feeling of this is, you know, what it's supposed to be. It was part of that world that made the world happen later on. It was like a, um, a slightly cleaned up version of Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> it had that quality, the way it laid in. I mean, it was a, a cleaner, more modern, I mean, you could, you could put art in it. The Goodyear House is, is really tremendously open and in a very comfortable way. I mean, you can walk around easily and go from one space to another and they're nice spaces to be in. And I don't know how much more comfortable or livable a house could be. The way this house lays with the little different heights and elevations. What's really awesome with this house is the way the pool is actually part of the house. It's almost part of the living space. At night, you know, the shimmer of the of the water reflecting against the ceilings of the overhangs. Uh, it's, 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 it's glorious. They seem so determined to, to, to tear it down for all these deadlines. I don't know what the rush was to tear it down. It got into one of those kind of dramatic situations. At that crucial moment, Frank Stella, through the Barnett and Annalee Newman Foundation, secured funding for World Monuments Fund to buy the house, saving it from demolition. The Barnett Newman Foundation offered to help. It's really about uh, support for the ideas of Barnett and Annalee Newman and their sympathy to modernism in general and uh, to what goes on basically uh, around New York. I didn't meet Barney until sometime in the 60s. He was a very big influence in the sense that, you know, if you're trying to be an artist in New York and kind of mark her, sort of say, well, look, if you can paint like this and this <laughs> be accepted, you can do anything. Anybody can do it, as they said. Working in partnership with the Society for the Preservation of Long Island Antiquities, World Monuments Fund got it listed on the State and National Register of Historic Places and secured a conservation easement to protect its future. It was ultimately purchased by A.B. Rosen, who lavished it with a complete restoration. When I work on something, I like the fact that there are limitations or easements by World Monument Funds. It, it makes you think a lot harder and make it livable in the 21st century, but stay with what you inherited. For me, um, preservation movements are essential and key to just the quality of life that we have for us and for ourselves. And I 
consider myself a custodian, definitely when it comes to Lever and, and, uh, and, uh, and Seagram's. Um, I do believe that we are better off with preserving and replacing constantly. Frank, congratulations. You are definitely my hero for stepping up with your conviction and your desire to do and make a difference. I think you succeeded. So.